Hi, I'm Akhilesh Kumar Shivastro. In the programming of the queues, on the last turn, we have discussed about the linear queue. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the circular queue. Uh, I hope you already have seen my uh, video of the linear queue because I'll be a bit fast here in the circular queue as compared to the linear queue. So let's look at the working of the circular queue. So uh, you must have seen in the linear queue, let's say the size of the linear queue is four and you are inserting some elements here in the linear queue. Let's say four elements are inserted and rear is at this position and front is at this position. Now, if you delete an element from the queue or the circular queue, then this element is going to be deleted and front will be incremented by one. If you delete this element also, front will be incremented at this position. So the queue after the two deletions looks like this. You have C and D elements, the rear is here and front is here. You have two blank positions here in the queue. The queue size is four and rear has reached to the maximum index three. Even then, if you try to perform the inversion, it will give us the overflow. We have two blank positions in the beginning. The rear has reached to the maximum position. Even then, it will it will be the condition of overflow in the case of the linear queue. Hence, we want to utilize these blank spaces. So to do that, we will be using the circular queue. What will circular queue do? If the rear has reached to the maximum position, it will bring to the minimum and will insert an item here if the possibility is there. Fine. So now let's see the circular queue with the example. So let's say we have taken a five size queue and the indexes in this queue is varying from zero to four. The front and the rear are initialized at last index. Although you can initialize it at any of the index in between zero to four. If the size is five, you can declare it at any position from zero to four. But here we're considering or here we are taking that the rear and the front are initialized to the last index that is size minus one. If you have to insert an element, you will have to update the rear position. So what I'm doing that rear plus one mod size. Here the size is five. So rear is at four index. I'm in adding one to this and taking its modulus with five. So five modulus five will give you zero. So the new updated position for the rear is zero and you can insert an item here. Now, if I have to insert one more element, then I'll in update the rear position by the same formula, zero plus one. Currently rear is at zero index. I add one to this and take its modulus with five. It will give us one. So I can insert the next element at one index. Now, similarly, if I have to insert one more element, then I will have to update the rear. So one plus one mod five will give us two. It means I'll insert the next element at index number two. So the process of the insertion is very simple. We just have to increment the rear or update the rear with the formula rear plus one size, and you have to insert an item there. If you have to delete the element, in that case, you have to update the front position first. So what used to happen in the linear queue that we were deleting the element from the front and then we were incrementing the front. Here the process of the deletion is a bit different wherein we are first updating the front position and then deleting the element. So we'll have to update the front with the same formula that we did for the rear. So front plus one mod size is the formula for the new updated front position. Currently the front is at zero, at four index. So my formula will be four plus one mod size, it means five, it means five mod five, it means this will give us zero. So the new updated position for the front is zero index and you can delete the zero index element. If you have to delete one more element from the queue, then you will have to again update the front position. So front will be updated with the formula zero plus one mod five, it means one mod five, this will give us one. So we go to the one position and delete this element. Similarly, if I have to delete one more element, then one plus one 
mod 5, it means 2 mod 5, the updated position of the front is 2, and you can delete this element. You can see that after the deletion of this element, front is at 2 index and rear is also at 2 index. And rear and front both are at the, at the same index, which means the queue is empty. So if you see, or if you recall the uh, initialization process wherein I have updated the rear and the front at the same position. In this uh, particular scenario, I took it at the four index or size minus one index. You can take it to any index, but the rear and front will have to be initialized at the same index. So this is the condition of emptiness that if rear and the front both are at the same index, the queue will be empty. Now let's take this scenario again and let's insert some more elements in the queue and then we can form some of the conditions of the overflow accordingly. Let's say I have this queue and the queue has a size five and I have initialized the rear and the front both at the four index or the size minus one index. Now, if I have to insert the element, I have updated this rear to come at this index and A is inserted. I have updated this again and B is inserted. I have updated this again and C is inserted. I have updated this again and D is inserted. If I try to insert one more element in this, I will have to update the rear. And as soon as you update the rear, it becomes equal to front. And if this becomes equal to front, the further insertion will not be possible because it becomes equal and equal is the condition of the emptiness. We will never let this happen. So it means that if I have a size five queue, only four elements can be inserted in, the, in this queue. Because if you insert the fifth element also, the rear and front will also become equal. So that will give us a wrong picture. Although the queue is, queue is full, it is showing us that the queue is empty. So just to avoid that, one less element is inserted when we have working with a circular view. So let's write the codes for the insertion and the deletion. I hope the initialization is pretty clear to you. I'm writing the algorithm here and then we'll write the code. So initialization is very simple. In the initialization, we are going to initialize the rear and the front at any index that you desire. In between zero to size minus one, you can initialize it anywhere. You can initialize it to zero, you can initialize it to one or any place as you like. And then for the NQ, wherein an element X is given to you, which has to be inserted, you will first have to check if the queue overflows or not. To check if the queue overflows or not, you will have to find the updated rear position. So if the rear plus one mod size, if I update the position of uh, the rear and it becomes equal to the front, it means we cannot insert the element. You can see that. We're just finding, or we are just applying a formula of q dot rear plus one mod size. I'm not updating rear. I'm just looking at if I update the rear like this, whether it will become equal to the front. If it becomes equal to the rear, it means the insertion will not be possible. Hence, you will write q overflows. And if the q overflows, it will either prefer to exit or return. But if it does not overflow, you will update the rear with the formula q dot rear plus one mod size and at the rear index in the item array, you can insert the given element like this. So this is the algorithm for NQ. Similarly, you can write the algorithm for DQ also. That's going to be very simple. You will first have to check if you can delete an element from the queue or not. So queue is given and you have to remove an element. First check if you can delete the element or not. So you can delete the element only if rear and front are not equal. If the rear and front are equal, it means queue is empty. The queue does not have any element in it. So you will have to write queue underflows. And in case the queue underflow, you cannot delete an element. So prefer to exit or return. Otherwise, you save the, sorry, you will have to update the front position first. So you can update the front position with the formula q dot front is equals to q dot front plus one mod size. And you save the 
front element in some variable. So from the item array at the front position, you save the element in some x variable and you return this x. So first the front is updated, then the element is taken in some variable and that is returned. So this is the DP option. So now let's uh, uh, try to write the code for this. So we have this uh, Q, the, the linear Q code, we are going to update this to circular Q. Let's say that the name of the Q is CQ. CQ means a circular Q. It will have three elements in it in the structure, the item array, which will contain the elements, the rear and the front indexes. We have declared this uh, Q globally such that, let's say the name of the Q is CQ. We are declaring, declaring it globally so that every function can use it. You can do it locally also. So CQ dot front and the rear have to be initialized. You can initialize it to any position as it is desired. I, if I update it as zero, it's fine. If I update it as one, that is also fine. If I update it as two, that is also fine. So you can initialize it at any point as per your interest. Or So the NQ function will have to be written. Let's write the NQ function. So in the NQ function, as we have said that, we'll first have to check the overflow condition. So how can we find out the overflow condition? We will have to update the rear and you will have to check if this is equal to front. So if CQ dot rear plus one mod size is equal to CQ dot front, it means the inversion will not be possible. This is the case of the overflow. So I'm writing a condition Q overflows. And then I'll prefer to exit. If Q does not overflow, then I will have to update this rear index. So rear index is updated with the formula CQ dot rear equals to CQ dot rear plus one dot size. And then at the updated rear position in the item array. I will update the item or will insert the item. So this is the code for the MQ or the inversion. Let's write the code for the DQ. It will delete an element from the queue, but the deletion will only be possible if there are elements in the queue. So if the rear and the front both are at the same position, it means this is the condition of the emptiness. So if you are trying to delete an element from the empty queue, this will result in the underflow. But if not, then you will have to update the rear position. So let's update the rear position like this, CQ dot. Not the rear, but the front. So your CQ dot front equals to CQ dot front plus one. mod size. Fine. So after updating the front index, you will save the front element in some x variable. So x equals to cq dot item cq dot front and then return this element. So this is the condition, this is the code for the DQ. Now after this, uh, let's initialize this queue and try to insert the elements. So up to nine elements insertion will be fine. But uh, once you insert the 10th element, this will overflow. So let's test it for the overflow. So you can see that the queue overflows because up to nine element, it was fine. But the 10th element's insertion results in the overflow. Let's say this uh, uh, that only seven elements are inserted, and after this, I'm trying to delete an element. So let's see if the DQ functions also work fine. So the deleted element is percentile D. 
the dp function is called let's try to delete another time so the first deleted element should be 100 next should be 200 you can see that the first deleted element is 100 and the second deleted element is 200 if i perform the deletion for eight times everything will work fine seven times sorry it will work fine so let's delete the elements seven times it works fine let's try to delete it one more time it should print the q underflows you can check that q underflows is what's being printed here with the code so i think this circular q is uh, complete at this point in time i hope you will code this at your end and will you will get confident in the programming of the queue. In the next lecture, we will discuss about some more concepts related to the programming of the queue. Thanks for watching this video.